Gone are the days when emails were designed with just single width and plain layouts. Responsive emails shape today's email marketing design and help you get your brand's message out there to your target audience. So as marketers, it's important to understand how to design these responsive emails that convert. Shall we get ready to hear some best practices? Welcome to the Zoho Campaigns Expert Diaries. I'm Aishwarya, your host, and today we'll be speaking to Anne Tomlin, the founder of Emails You All. Anne has celebrated expertise in HTML email coding, and she's a designer who stays up to date with all the latest design trends. Welcome to our show, Anne. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Well, thank you for having me. So why don't we start with the basics? Can you tell us about how you got into email coding and development? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm completely self-taught. I taught myself HTML and CSS and got a job in web development. And uh, mm -hmm. someday, one day uh, um, someone asked me to do an email and I fell in love with it completely, like from the very <laughs> first moment. Interesting. I love the way you said you're self-taught because I think that's the greatest driver for most of us. So uh, I think that would have paved a very good platform for you to learn a lot of new things and then get onto a totally interesting field and grow in love with it. Yeah. So you have experience in hand coding PSDs and sketch files to responsive emails. That's great to know. What's the interesting email campaign that you worked on recently and uh, who was it targeted at? Well, uh, currently, the most recent thing I've been building has been for Dolls Kill. Uh, uh -huh. they're, a, they're a fashion brand, and their target market is a is like young women. Okay. And uh, I'm taking them from baked in text to live text, which is exciting. Ah, that's great. So live text, as in you pull in, um, you know, the feeds from Twitter and Instagram and all of your social handles, something like that, or... Oh, uh, meaning that uh, they used to have um, the text baked into the image, which uh -huh. is not my practice. So uh, I'm taking them to text that can be, uh, you know, loaded without loading the images. Oh, great, great. So uh, what are some trends that you find in these fashion brands? Because you say they're targeted at young women. So is there like a trend that you notice here? Um, uh, well, um, I definitely think that fashion brands are more image centric. So um, even though they do have, uh, you know, there are certain circumstances in which one has to have uh, baked in text. I think that the whole, the industry is really sort of moving towards live text. So because mm -hmm. some, uh, some email clients don't load images on, uh, you know, by default. So you still want to have your like message uh, out there, even though your main, uh, yeah, your main uh, thing for parts of your uh, email sh are going to be images because of the, uh, you know, the fashion part yeah. of it. You can still do a lot with, with live text, even if your main idea is images. Yeah, that, that sounds good, actually. And can you elaborate a little bit on these, uh, what you call as live text? Because I, I thought maybe that would be interesting for the listeners to know uh, what are the different forms. Actually, one of the recent formats that I encountered with uh, for a live text was how, um, you know, emails were able to pull in live social feeds of brands and show uh, the various offers and purchases that were there on the feed and just stuck them up in the email. So is, are there some trends or are there some formats of live text to be used in the emails? Uh, I have seen uh, what you're talking about with the um, with live feeds of uh, uh -huh. the in Instagram and yeah. uh, Twitter. I have done the uh, the Instagram um, one on this on Dolls Kill, but okay. uh, the most I think the one that that I'm most impressed with is the uh, Twitter feed, the live Twitter feed on um, I think it was uh, uh, Litmus's uh, I think their Litmus Live uh, uh -huh. email email from a couple of years ago. Great. It was really cool. And I've seen a lot since then. A lot of people do that. Certainly. Uh, now that we're talking about this, uh, what are some ways that you would suggest to make emails more interactive? 
think the, the easiest way to make uh, you know an email more interactive is to use hover states. So mm -hmm. they are a simple you know little thing that you can do, sort of a progressive enhancement that uh, you know really brings a little bit of pow to the email clients that uh, that support it. Nice. That's a good suggestion that most of the listeners today can pick it up. So let's talk about your love for emails and languages. Uh, I recently read an article where you had mentioned how languages uh, involve you more in emails. So is there a connection between these two for you? Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, <laughs> my degree is in classics, like uh -huh. Latin and Greek. So I studied Latin for 10 years. So I think it might be easier for me to pick up programming languages because I knew, you know, a couple other languages. <laughs> uh, if nothing else, it makes, uh, you know, me aware of the syntax of programming languages. Yeah, that's a nice tie there to know the languages both ways, both classical and the, the actual programming languages. I know. That, that's nice right. to know. How do you ensure better inbox preview and responsiveness when you know designing multilingual emails now that we've spoken about languages? And are there any special aspects that email marketers need to keep in mind? Yeah, um, definitely multilingual emails are can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing is uh, going to be difference in like word length. And an email designed in English sometimes like doesn't allow for long compound words like in German or phrases that take longer to say in Spanish or French. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, mo it's most efficient when I'm brought in to uh, advise on the design so I can look for things that might become issues in mobile and uh, that sort of, sort of thing. Uh, if the design is already complete, uh, I p play with font size and weight, padding, uh, margins, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gets even more complicated <laughs> in uh, modular systems. So in that case, I have to code the structure to work in all languages without any special changes for the different languages. And uh, in that case, I take all the languages and test them in the structure one by one and then code for the longest language. Wow, that's that's a very optimized way uh, to know how, how do you test it? Because I, I totally agree with the point where you said uh, when in English, it's it's like, like little words. And when it gets translated or seen in another language, it, it says it's too many words. Because I've literally seen knowing French, I've seen the difference between how a text looks in English and how it, it looks in French. I agree with you. I think that those uh, that's, you know, one of the best things to do with with languages is test, test, test. <laughs> I know it's, it, it's like a code that you should remember when you code multiple languages. So uh, you've helped perform testing on 46 email clients. Wow. What are some challenges that you've encountered along the way? Well, I test in every single email. Um, I test with the 46 most popular email clients <laughs> and I don't skimp. I do all 46 every single time. And uh, the biggest challenge I'd say is that uh, email clients will make changes to the CSS they support uh, and the code that they insert around, you know, uh, around my code without any prior notice at all. Like they just change things and don't tell us. So <laughs> yeah, uh, so our email developers are just left to scramble and come up with hacks to combat those changes. And there are so many hacks. That's tricky and challenging at the same time for you to identify these additional um, element and then you know sort of troubleshoot and get the thing out there. Totally. In fact, I read, uh, you know, where you send uh, all of these 46 screenshots to your uh, clients. Is that true? Uh, do you actually test in each of these platforms and actually send them a proof or the screenshot for them to refer to? Yeah, I use, um, I, I personally use a the Litmus platform 
And mm -hmm. uh, so that has all the, uh, you know, 46 renderings. And yeah, I send uh, every time I'm finished with a project, I send uh, a link to those litmus results of all the email clients uh, to my to my client, and you know, just to make to show them, to be absolutely sure that this looks great in you know every popular email client. Wow, that's transparency to the maximum level, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> So you develop emails using uh, Fluid or the hybrid method. We would love to know a little more about this. Uh, so could you elaborate on what's involved in this kind of a design technique? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that technique combines like the rigid structures of, of a fixed width responsive email mm -hmm. with the uh, flexible, you know, uh, fluidity of fluid emails of ghost tables and divs. Uh, it was originally created to combat Gmail way, way back when, when it didn't support uh, uh, media queries. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's essentially a way to just stack, you know, columns without having to use media queries. And I still use it for the few email clients that don't support media queries mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, uh, yeah, I have control issues like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, having my email look the best it can in every client is really important to me and it's utmost, you know, in my business. That's a smart work there because uh, now that there are most of these clients that support these media queries, so you can go around doing the straightway method for them and for these that doesn't support, you can still go ahead and do your hybrid or fluid method. So it's sort of a smart work there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so if you had to share with us top three email marketing best practices, what would they be? Well, I think the number one uh, would be live text. And I know we, we've already covered it, but just mm -hmm. uh, it's really important. So yeah, having, I've had more emphasis now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, having, you know, uh, the, the text as part of your images um, is going to, make that text not visible when uh, those email clients that hide images by default, like load uh, images. So uh, the alt text, you can, you can, uh, you definitely should use alt text mm -hmm. and it works okay, but really nothing replaces the impact that, you know, live text makes. Cool. I think yeah. that's like a valuable point that our listeners can pick it up today because it's been on a trend and it's important to understand how to set this up in emails. Totally. Uh, let's see. The other one that I would say is uh, accessibility. And that is a hot topic right now and uh, for a good reason. So all sorts of people are going to interact with your email and you need to make it easy for everyone to interact with it. And that includes like high contrast, alt text, uh, you know, role presentation on your tables, etc. So true. So is there like a, a sort of a challenge or, you know, rather a, a, something very difficult for you to uh, access uh, with emails when you are just designing it for accessibility? Uh, I think the ability to test is um, uh. quite difficult at this point. Um, there are so many screen readers available that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's sort of like the email client situation where there are tons <laughs> of different uh, screen readers. Right. Um, but also, like, there's, uh, I mean, we have things like Litmus and uh, Email on Acid to see how the uh, you know, the email renders, but we don't have, you know, the ability to test or easily uh, test how an email sounds. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. super important. That's, yeah, how an email sounds, you know, with accessibility. Um, I think there are uh, some things within uh, Litmus or an email on ACID which allow um, some testing in uh like con high contrast and you know people with um maybe visual uh you know uh 
difficulties. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, that's super helpful, but I, I really also, the listen, the, the listening part is, uh, is important as well. And I wish there was an easier way to test that. Uh, very true, because uh, now I see an increasingly popular usage of conversational AI. So it's not just the people with disabilities uh, that use screen readers, but you know, more often than not, uh, even normal people do use uh, conversational AI or the voice bots to read out the emails. So I think there should be an effective method in the times to come to actually test how this listening experience of emails is. I completely agree. 100%. I wish that would be the case. I think uh, people would now pick it up from our conversation and sort of start building on something like that. So yeah. know, 2020 is the year to look out for something that gives us enough optimization methods for listening experiences in emails. Yeah, that'd be great. If we mentioned by email on acid as one of the developers making emails better, congratulations, this is such a great news. How is it to be recognized as a top email developer and how do you plan to take your work forward? Well, um, I definitely admire all the other developers uh, that were on that list. So it's super flattering to <laughs> be included. Um, I really think that my like, dogged dedication and perseverance to making an email as pixel perfect as it you know possibly can be in all major email clients is like the reason why I was listed. I never take shortcuts. I always follow best practices. So it might take a little bit you know longer and it might be a little bit harder to code live text like in a weird format. But I honestly believe it's you know, it will give my clients like the best ROI on their email. Spot on for such positivity. <laughs> so we've come to the end of this session. Anne. Let's conclude today's session by looking at the future of email marketing. We already did discuss uh, a little bit about that with the listening experience. But do you have any predictions, uh, thoughts or, you know, trending phrases to describe email's future? I think, uh, well, really the um, email development is so uh, volatile that the only prediction I can really make is that it will continue to be a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, email clients are gonna totally continue to change things without warning. Uh, best practices are gonna evolve and developers are gonna come up with, you know, like really awesome emails that are gonna wow us all. So um, I personally would like to see the global adoption of accessibility like we talked about, you yes. know, since it's so desperately needed. So I'm going to say I hope that accessibility will continue to be as uh, hot of a topic as it is now. Yes, email geeks, please listen to our conversation today and please pick up that listening experience of emails as the next best trend of 2020. Thank you very much, Anne. Your whole talk today gave the listeners some important points to remember when it comes to designing their email campaigns. You've actually simplified the whole concept of email coding and development for us. And I'm sure the listeners today would take away relevant design tips, uh, even if they're not designers, you know, somebody like me as well, because you've made it easy for all of us. Oh, well, great. I'm glad that it, it, uh, it is easy, <laughs> or I was able to make it easy. Today's session highlighted key things one should remember while designing email campaigns for their brand. Subscribe to the Zoho Campaigns Expert Diaries on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube to learn more about email marketing. See you all until the next time we bring such an interesting session.